are getting into lesson 13. It's a very exciting, almost as exciting as my hair right now. It's very exciting because uh, we're getting into division. Uh, we are going to be dividing decimals, but we are not going to start with the standard algorithm today. Today what we're going to be doing uh, is building, continuing to build your number sense, consider uh, the place value chart, think about all of the wonderful place values that we've worked with, and we're just going to be using our logic and we're going to be dividing decimals by whole numbers. Uh, so let's take a look. It's going to be great. Here we are. Believe it or not, uh, I cannot believe we're already on lucky lesson 13. So like I said, we're going to be dividing. Uh, we are going to think about place value and we're really going to think about unit forms of these numbers and attach uh, unit form with our logic and then we're really just going to fill in the blanks. So let's just take this slowly one step at a time. So we have this expression 4.2 divided by 7 oh, or we can rename that as 42 tenths divided by 7. Okay. So we're going to rewrite it a couple of times and then we're going to fill in our final answer. Rewriting these um, expressions a few different times in unit form is really going to help us understand what it means to divide 42 tenths into seven equal groups. Okay, so 4.2 divided by seven is equal to, like I said here, 42 tenths divided by seven. 42 tenths divided by seven. Well, I know 42 divided by seven is six. So 42 tenths divided by seven is equal to six tenths. And then this final uh, answer space is just for standard form. Six tenths looks like this in standard form. Okay, let's check out another one. So we have 2.64 divided by 2, or we can rename this as 2 and 64 hundredths, or we could even say 264 hundredths. Let's see what blanks they give us and let's kind of move things around here. Okay, so 2.64 divided by 2 is equal to, oh, two ones divided by two, two ones divided by two, plus we're decomposing this, you guys. So we're decomposing this into two ones and then 64 hundredths. We're decomposing it because we kind of, we want to be able to do this in our head. Okay, so now let's evaluate what um, two ones divided by two is and 64 hundredths divided by two. So two divided by two, two ones divided by two is one plus, let's think about 64 divided by two. This is 64 hundredths, of course, divided by two. If it isn't immediately obvious what 64 divided by two is, ain't no shame in doing a little long division. Two goes into six three times. Three times two is six. Our difference here is zero. We're going to bring down the four. How many twos go into four? Two. We know that two times two is four, and we have no difference. Okay, so 64 divided by two is 32. Keep in mind, this is 32 hundredths, 32 hundredths. This final line is for standard form. One, one, and 32 hundredths hundredths, excuse me. So this really is just some mathematical gymnastics. Renaming the expression and then figure renaming the expression in unit form and then figuring out what our final answer is in standard form. Let's take a look at a couple more here. More examples. Uh, we're continuing to work on division, uh, like I said here in lesson 13, and we're going to be doing some more kind of mathematical gymnastics. I want you guys really to think about what's going on here. So we have eight groups of blank hundredths is 32 hundredths, meaning 32 hundredths um, is, is our final quantity. Eight groups of blank hundredths is 32. Well, let's think about this. 32 divided by what is equal to eight? Or eight times what is equal to 32. Well, you guys know, hopefully this is your multiplication, you're rifling through your multiplication facts. I hope you guys are thinking about the fact that eight times four is 32. 
So here's the deal. Eight groups of four hundredths is equal to 32 hundredths. Eight groups of four hundredths. Let's think about what that looks like. You guys keep in mind that division is the reciprocal or the opposite of multiplication. So they are very, multiplication and division are very closely related. In fact, they're the opposite of one another. Okay, so four hundredths. We have one, two, three, four. Eight groups of four hundredths. I'm going to go ahead and take the time because I think this is so valuable right now. I'm going to go ahead and take the time to make eight copies of four hundredths. I'm losing count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I'm running out of room. Seven, eight, I hope. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight groups of four hundredths. How many hundredths do we have in our hundredths place value? Well, we have 32 hundredths. Do you see how this is all connected? So what then we can, what we can see on the other side is 32 hundredths divided into eight equal groups. Each of these lines has four hundredths in it is equal to four hundredths. Each of these lines is, uh, consists of four hundredths. I have eight groups within these 32 hundredths. So we can see that 32 hundredths divided into eight equal groups, well, within each of these groups, each of these lines, sorry, this is a little bit larger, we find four hundredths. Pretty cool, huh? Let's think about this one next, you guys. Uh, so now we have 84 thousandths divided by seven. We're trying to figure out what goes in our blank. 84 thousandths divided by seven. Well, let's work backwards. We're going to know that something, seven times something is equal to 84. Keep in mind, I know that we're dealing with different place values, but that's just helpful. Seven times something is equal to 84. If it's not completely or immediately obvious what that something is, you can go ahead and do some quick long division here on the side. How many sevens go into eight? One. One times seven is seven. Our difference between eight and seven is one. Bring down our four. And now we have to think about how many sevens go into 14. Well, there are two sevens that go into 14. Two times seven is 14, and we have no difference. Okay, so now we have some very valuable information. Seven times 12 is 84. So now we have to think about this. Seven groups of blank thousands is 84 thousands. Well, seven groups Seven groups of 12 thousandths is 84 thousandths. Same relationship, seven groups of 12 ones is equal to 84 ones. Seven groups of 12 thousandths is equal to 84 thousandths. Therefore, 84 thousandths divided by seven is going to be, sorry, I wrote this in a really funny way, 12 thousandths stuff, huh? Let's look at one more here, you guys. Five groups of blank tenths is two or twenty tenths. Okay, well, let's go over here. Twenty tenths divided by five or two divided by five. Twenty tenths divided by five. If we had 20 tenths and we were to put them into five equal groups, how many tenths would we have in each group? Well, we would have four tenths. 20 tenths divided by five is equal to four tenths. Standard form of four tenths looks like 0.4. Let's connect that to what's going on here on the left side. Five groups of blank tenths is two or 20 tenths. Well, Five groups of four tenths is 20 tenths. 
five groups of four tenths is 20 tenths, sorry, not 20 ones. Five groups of four tenths is 20. Or we can say, just like we do here on the right side, uh, five groups of four tenths is 20 tenths, not 20 ones. 20 tenths, 20 tenths divided by five is equal to four tenths. Do you see how the division and the multiplication are so closely related? Very cool stuff. So here what we're really doing, you guys, is exploring that relationship. Thinking about what it means to make copies of something. Thinking about what it means to divide something evenly. And we can do that in a very visual way. Take a look at one more problem here, you guys. And again, we are connecting uh, this division with our logic. Uh, here we're being asked, are the quotients below, keep in mind quotient is a fancy term for the answer um, to a division problem. Quotient, and this is very important that you guys know this, um, is the fancy term for the answer to a division problem or equation. So we're being asked, are the quotients below, quotients again, the, it's the fancy word for the answer to a division problem. I'm underlining these here in green. Are the quotients below reasonable? Explain your answers. Well, let's think about it. 54, I love writing these in unit form so we can really see what's going on here. 54 hundredths, hundredths divided by... 6 equals 9 ones. Hmm. So if we have 54 hundredths, let's just draw that really quickly on a place value chart or model that. Um, I have, um, I'm going to put two digits in here just so we can recognize um, how many hundredths we have. We know that we this would not be our final answer, but I just want to think about how many hundredths we have. So 54 hundredths divided into six equal groups. So let's divide 54 into six equal groups. When we divide 54 into six equal groups, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you went too far, Mrs. Calamaris. Um, Let's just think about what is 54 divided by 6. 54 hundredths divided into 6 equal groups. Well, 54 times what is, I'm so sorry. Let's try that again. 6 times what is equal to 54. Well, we know 6 times 9 is equal to 54. So 54 hundredths divided into 6 equal groups that means that we're going to have nine hundredths in each group. Are we going to have nine, if we have 54 hundredths and we're dividing 54 hundredths into six equal groups, are we going to have nine ones in each group? No way. That's crazy talk. We would have nine hundredths in each group, but certainly not nine ones. That's pure insanity. Let's look at this one. Um, I'm going to erase that just so we have a little bit more room. I think it's raining outside. It feels very chilly. I feel a cool breeze coming into the classroom. I'm going to erase this just so we have more room to work. Um, and then I'm going to grab another color just so it's more exciting. Um, okay, so here we have 5.4. We can rename 5.4 as 54 tenths because we're feeling fancy, 54 tenths divided into six equal groups is equal to nine tenths. That's how Cal would say it, nine tenths. Well, let's think about it. Let's support our reasoning with a picture on a place value chart. Okay, so for the time being, I'm gonna squeeze 54 into our tenths. We know that that would not be a final answer because we do not put more than one digit in a place value. But let's think about what happens when we divide 54 into six even groups within our tenths category. Well, I have 54 tenths. I'm going to divide 54 tenths into six equal groups. We know that six times nine, again, is 54. 
So in turn, 54 divided by 6 is equal to 9. So if I were, if I, we have our 54 tenths, we're going to divide them into six equal groups. We're going to end up with nine tenths in each group. Yes! Yes! You're correct. Well done. Happy face. That is correct. And explaining your answers is completely acceptable to use a place value chart to explain your answer. Let's look at this one. I'm just going to do this one over here, I'm going to grab another color, uh, 54 divided by 6. Okay, so we have 54 ones divided by 6 ones is equal to 9 hundredths, as Cal would say. Well, I think you guys see right away, 54 ones divided by 6 is not equal to 9 hundredths. It is equal to nine ones. I don't even need a place value chart to prove that because we just know being the amazing uh, fifth graders that we are that 54 divided by six is not nine hundredths. We know 54 divided by six is equal to good old number nine one. Um, confused? Probably. This is confusing stuff. Super confused? Please re-watch parts of this again so that you can come in on Wednesday prepared to practice this. Again, what we're doing is mental mathematical gymnastics. We are uh, deconstructing numbers. We are renaming them in unit form. And we're really seeking to have a very solid understanding of what this means. What does it mean to divide a number? Well, what, it, what does it mean when the number is a decimal? Please don't be afraid when we're working with decimals. You guys know that decimals are just numbers that are less than one and that they live on the right side of the decimal. We are using the same logic as we would with whole number division. Now, because you guys are in fifth grade and you're brilliant, we're taking it to decimal land. So if parts of this are seem, seeming really kind of blurry, please rewatch. Please know that you need uh, one problem complete in your math book. And please know that the secret word is fuzzy. Fuzzy. Um, if your uh, understanding is fuzzy, it is your responsibility to go back and watch parts of this video again. Again, secret word fuzzy. See you tomorrow.